It's October 8, 2020. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I'm here at Tortuga to uh, start marking out exactly what I need to do in terms of boat work this year. Uh, as I mentioned in my video about hauling out, I have already gone over and sounded the top sides of the hull, and I found three spots that need a little work. One of them is right here. I have a little bit of punky wood right in here, right on the top of this plank. It's in the middle of the plank, and, and it seems like it extends underneath this rub strake. So what I'm going to do today is determine just how much I need to do on each of the three spots that I have to repair. So I'll take this rub strake off. Fortunately, it's just uh, got dolphinite as a bedding compound, so it'll pull right off and that'll let me get in here and sand the paint off this area and determine how and then sound the wood and determine just how far the bab wood extends and mark the plank to see how much I'm going to have to replace. Okay, I'm going to take this rub strake off and we will get ready to go. Okay, first step in getting this off is to pull off this uh, brass strip. And that's just a series of screws. I've got a regular slotted screwdriver here, but it turns out the last couple of, back of screws back here are Phillips. So I'll have to get another screwdriver. It's not a big deal though. So, as you can see, this is pretty easy. These are little bronze screws I'm taking out. And uh, we'll just back these out. And once this is off, this little brass, and once this little bronze uh, piece is off, that will reveal the fasteners that hold the actual wooden rub strake onto the boat. And of course, I'm going to save these fasteners because these little buckers cost about 50 cents each. Okay, where's the screwdriver? Okay, that's off. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six fasteners to remove to get the actual rub strake off. stop filming because watching me unscrew screws is not that exciting. Well, that was a bit of a job. You can see where there's discoloration here compared to back here where the uh, bedding compound behind that rub strake had failed and it was, uh, it was leaking. So, Take, I'll scrape this bedding compound off. I can see I've already got bad wood here. And a little bit above. Once I get this bedding compound off, I'm going to sand this. Oh yeah, that's completely gone in there. And we'll see just how much 
We've got that soft. I'm going to have to replace part of this plank and part of this plank, definitely. The plank boundary is not parallel to where the rope strake was. It kind of goes down through it. So I think I've got a little rod in here and back here quite a way. So I'm going to take my sander with some fairly coarse paper, 80 grit, and sand off some paint here to see just how much I'm going to have to replace. Okay. An issue it extends back to here, definitely. Now, I'd say the wood is sound from about here back, so I'm going to mark it with a little masking tape since this is just exploratory right now. I need to go back to there and up here, pretty punky there. The wood is sound up there. So I will probably go to about here. Now, I got a couple fasteners here, so there's a frame here. And I think what I'm going to do, because this does not, this damage does not extend down. The wood is sound down here. I'm going to put a Dutchman in along this plank edge. I'm going to do the same up here. pretty sound. So I think I will just put my Dutchman in kind of like that. And then on this part, I think I'll do pretty much the same length and up about there. So what I'm going to do is two, two plank edge repairs. I'm going to take this piece out here because it's soft up to here. And this is pretty solid down here. Maybe I'll come down a little further on that. So two plank edge repairs where I will basically put a Dutchman in to repair the plank edge. So that's what's just a little punky spot, of course, turned out to be bigger than I thought it would be. And the wood further aft is sound. So we'll get this uh, cut out. That'll be the next step. I've got one, two, three. I'm guessing there's fast four fasteners to remove. And uh, once those are out, I can cut the wood out. I'll have to reef out this seam. These are in with Phillips head screws. Up here. And once I cut this out, I may find that I need to cut out more wood than that. So there should be a fastener right there. And up. One up here. I think I'm going to need a hammer to get that out. So, four fasteners to remove, and then we can cut that wood out. And once the wood is cut out, I'll have a much better feel 
for just how much I really do need to replace. But I don't think I'm going to replace these two plank ends, all, planks all the way after the transom. I'll just do uh, plank edge repairs here, which basically means I'm going to epoxy in some new wood here and new wood here to give me new plank edges. And when I put that rub strake back on, I'll do a better job of rebedding it than was done the last time it was taken off, which judging from the screws in there and the fact that one of them was actually a machine screw and not a wood screw, uh, was not done by me. So that's the first area that I'm going to have to repair. That's a pretty straightforward one. Uh, it'll take uh, two days, uh, one day for tear out and to do the first plank edge and then a second day to do the second plank edge. Then we'll recalk and repaint. Now the next spot I want to replace is right up here. It's just a plank end. There's a butt joint right here. So I'm going to uh, remove the paint here and onto this butt joint. Back a little bit on either side and see just exactly how far this extends. But that's pretty soft <laughs> as you can see. It doesn't extend too far back though, so I can probably just replace a little bit there. But what I'll do here, because this is a butt joint, is I'm going to cut out the plank end here and the plank end here, and then I'm going to cut a scarf, which is an angled surface, into this plank end, and a scarf over here into this plank end, and then I'll make up a piece of wood with matching scarfs to go in here and I will epoxy it in so it's epoxy to this plank end and this plank end on about an 8 inch long surface in each case and that will replace the butt joint joining these two planks into effectively a single plank. So let's get the sander out and clean this up see how bad it looks. Okay Sorry about the lack of light. There's not much light on this side of the boat because we're right up against the outer wall of the shed. Okay, so here's my butt joint. There are fasteners here here and here that are pretty well shot where the butt joint is the plank ends are screwed to the butt joint and here here and here as well and these fasteners back here go into a frame as do these here so what I think I'm gonna do is cut this out so that my scarf lands on the frame so here's a frame right here and here's a frame right here and let's see how far back this wood is. Well, I'm going to have to go one frame further aft on this over here. So I'll have to go whatever this distance is there about to here to land my the other end of the scarf because that wood is pretty punky in there. Too close to that to leave it there. This is sound though. So I'm going to put some tape on here for where I want my scarf joints to be and I'll sand off the paint back here and reveal the fasteners. Just ran my battery out so that's the end of sanding on this one so I'm gonna mark this up and then we'll come back and take a look at it okay here is the area I'm gonna repair I'm gonna go uh, with a scarf that extends from here to here 
a scarf that extends from here to here. This is supposed to be an S, <laughs> just for illustration. And from here to here, I'm going to cut the wood out completely. And that will span the area of the old butt block and allow me to uh, also span a frame here. And I'm landing the the center of the scarf right on a frame and that allows me once I get this all glued up to screw through the scarf and into the frame which will secure it even better than uh, just the epoxy. I'll do that on both ends. So I'm going to have to I'll have two fasteners, four fasteners, six fasteners through the scarfed in piece that will join these two planks here and here and replace this bad wood in here. So that shouldn't uh, be too hard. I just have to reef out the seams here and cut this wood out. Now let me show you a diagram with tape of what this scarf joint will look like if we were looking at it from the edge. I'll just uh, do that uh, in a different spot. Okay, this is just some masking tape on the hole to illustrate what a scarf repair like this looks like. You might think of the top edge of this piece of tape as representing the inside of the plank. So if we were looking at the inside this plank, the, this would be the inside surface of the plank. The bottom edge of this piece of tape is the outside surface of the plank. And what we're going to do is cut away all of the wood, the full thickness of the plank from here over to here, and then we're going to cut a bevel into the plank from here to here. And then we'll cut a matching piece of new wood that will basically look like this material, which we will remove from the existing plank. And when we put it in, we will epoxy the new wood to the old wood along this surface and along that surface. Now, an epoxy joint in Douglas fir planking like this is actually stronger than the wood. So this uh, will basically provide us with a joining piece to, to cause two planks, which might have had a junction here, uh, to become one plank for the full width. And uh, so that's the plan. It's pretty straightforward. And... Uh, now all I have to do is start cutting. There is one more spot on the boat where I've got some wood to replace, and I'll show you where that is, although I'm not going to go up there today because I don't have uh, my stepladder. The other bit of uh, wood that I need to replace is right up there at the shear. You can see where the shear breaks and comes down. So I want to go from about 18 inches forward of that break all the way back. That's going to be required taking off the trim and cutting out the wood, scarfing in a new plank end, which means there will be only a scarf at one end, and fitting it in there. So that one is going to be a little more involved than the other two because I will have to uh, remove all the trim. But while I'm doing that, I am actually going to rebuild part of the deck up there on top because there has had in the past been some leakage which has caused the deck underside to be a little bit punky. So I'm going to rebuild about two feet of the deck edge and in to the hull about 18 inches. And that will be a complete rebuild including a new deck beam and uh, new uh, inside planking and then a new fiberglass uh, top for the deck. So I'll show you all that when I get going on it. So that is the three areas on the top sides that need a little work. Now this isn't much. This little piece here will take an afternoon. As I said back there where I've got it taped probably take two days and the other side is going to probably take uh, a full day because I have to cut two scarf joints into both the hull and the matching piece. So that's uh, 
the repair that I'm going to be doing on Tortuga over the next couple of weeks. And I, it is going to take a couple of weeks because the sailboat is still in the water and I will have to go do some sailing. I hope this uh, video illustrates some of the maintenance work that is sometimes required on a wooden boat. Now this isn't bad, only three places, and none of them are very big, so it's not going to represent too much of my time. And the materials cost is going to be trivial. I bought all the wood I'm going to need yesterday, and uh, I think it cost me $16. So, pretty minor materials cost, and most of the cost is going to be time. Altogether, it'll probably take me, oh, 16 hours of labor to do this repair. And then, of course, I have to repaint, and I hope this fall to get three coats of new paint on all of the new wood so that in the spring when I do the final coat of paint on the entire top sides I'll have a good base to work on. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you'll find out when my next exciting video is posted. Thanks again for watching.